How's it going people? It's your boy Voodoo Viz in the house. Happy New Year to everyone. It's 2019. Let's get the year kicked off with a very interesting video I came across on Muhammad Hijab's channel trying to explain why women have half the uh, value in the testimony compared to men in, cer in certain circumstances. Let's check out what he has to say. The Shahid is different to Arawi, by the way. Arawi is a narrator. And by, by the way, both of them fulfill the same practical functionality. They do. Arawi of the hadith, they, they, they narrate the hadith. And they're basically narrating it all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we know, the, the greatest ruat of the hadith, some of them are women. And one woman equaled one man in that context as a narrator of hadith. And that's more important than anything else because you're transmitting the deen, the religion of Islam. So here Muhammad Hijab says that uh, when it comes to narration, the narration of hadith, uh, women are equal to men. So there's no difference in the status or the veracity of a hadith. If a man narrated it or if a woman or if a woman narrated it. And, you know, hadith is more important than, you know, giving testimony in a court because that's where you get your religion from. So mine, naturally, the, ne the next question is, if a woman can be trusted to narrate a hadith, which is more important than a testimony in a court, why on earth does her testimony uh, matter? Or uh, why is her testimony only half of that of a man? Why do we always say that why do women have less rights as witnesses? Why don't we say why do women have less responsibilities? And I'll give you an example, right? Punitively and classically, what happens to witnesses if they are seen to speak falsehood? Tell me, someone put their hands up. Tell me what happens. Yes, they get lashed. Lashed, yes? Even in some cases in the Sharia, according to classical theory or, or classical books, etc., if four people come, one of them is lying, all of them get lashed. Yeah? You know this. Believe me. Believe me, yeah? If this was the case and a woman was being lashed and she didn't do anything wrong, you know what the West would say to you? How can you give this woman lashes and she did nothing wrong? I mean, there's so much wrong with uh, Muhammad Hijab's explanation here. Firstly, lashing, I don't agree with. Now, if you said to me, you know, in 6th century Arabia, where there is no prison system and blah, 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 maybe lashing, eh, okay, I, I can somehow see, I can see where you're coming from. But if you're saying we need lashing now and forever, then there are much better ways to deal with criminals or those people who lie and break the law. There's prisons, there's rehabilitation, there's therapy. There are so many ways to deal with people um, for you to uh, you know, resort to something as barbaric and as a sort of uh, base as lashing now when we have all this information for me is a, a massive no-no. I don't, I don't think it's humane. I don't think it's moral. And it may not even produce these, the, the, the results that you're looking for. Secondly, he also mentioned that if a person who gives uh, testimony, let's say there are four people who give testimony and one of them lies. So the other three didn't lie, but they also get lashed. And this is a, a, a classical view that he says, why is that just? How, how is it just or fair to punish someone for the crimes of someone else? Why is this so moral? How is this peaceful? How is this rational? That is completely wrong. And then he goes on to say, imagine if this was a woman. Imagine if a woman was being lashed for something she didn't do. Well, yeah, that's very bad. But it's also very bad if a man is being lashed for something he did not do. What, what 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 difference does it make if it's a man or a woman, right? If, if you're meant to be for humanity, your old Islam is for humanity, then it should be irrelevant to you whether a, a, an innocent man is being lashed or an innocent woman is being lashed. You're going to say that the reason why they have half testimony is, is because if they get lashed, then the West will say, ah, oh, look, when did Muhammad Hijab, when did you care so much about the opinions of the West? Like, oh, the West will say this, like, why are you lashing a woman? You don't seem to care what the West say about many other issues. But now, I mean, the, the people like this, do, you know, the, the Dawa crew, they do this all the time. Oh, the West, oh, the West. They, li they like to play this uh, deflection game and red herrings. They like, to, oh, but the West will say this, but the West will say that. Since when did Islam care what the West says or what the East says or what the North, South or whatever? Islam is a religion revealed by God. It is a divine religion. This is the claim, the, the eternal religion. It is above West, East. It is above modern, pre-modern, future, whatever you want to call it. So to pin it on the West and say, what will they say? That's a nonsense argument. It's not even an argument, to be honest with you. And it's wrong to lash someone if they did not 
lie or if they did not give false testimony. I would say it's wrong to lash someone full stop, but okay, I'm playing your game. It's wrong to lash someone if they did not lie. You have responsibility that's more than a woman now. You can be whipped for doing nothing wrong in a sense. You have to be put in a position of social responsibility. So Allah has alleviated a woman from that to a great extent. I don't think Allah has alleviated anyone from anything, to be completely honest with you. He's created a false or a very weak, let's say, uh, testimony system. And you are doing your utmost best to justify that and rationalize it with, I must say, really, really silly uh, ideas. Isn't this exactly what the feminists would have wanted anyways? Think about it. It's, it's giving women preferential treatment. Isn't this what the feminists would... Again, again, why are you putting this on the fem Since when did Islam care about the feminists? But I, I find it very uh, strange or ironic that you are reducing the whole women's movement in the West to the most recent wave of feminism, which I, by the way, do not agree with or appreciate. But a true feminist, a, a, a woman who really wants equal rights, wants exactly that. Equal rights, equal responsibility, financial, legal, moral, everything. So for you to say, oh, well, these new wave feminists, whatever, that is very a very weak argument from you and a very dishonest argument and dishonest representation of the whole women's rights movement in the West. Also, it's not preferential treatment. Why? Because let's say, for example, we have a case where we have one man and two women who are giving testimony. Now, let's say, for example, the man lies. By your own logic and by your own classical standards, all three would be whipped. That means two women are now whipped. Whereas if it's one man, one woman, only one woman would be whipped. So actually you've increased, or you've doubled the number of women who could potentially be lashed. Whereas in, you know, Western or whatever, Oriental standards, or even not even Oriental to be honest with you, just logical, one man, one woman uh, standard, only one woman would be lashed. But now because of your requirement, two women are now lashed instead of one. That's amazing preferential treatment, man. So on a positive note, uh, <laughs> so uh, that's the first video of 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be happy to read your comments in the section below. I'll see you guys next time.